Hi. Grandpa. Hi there. How's it going? This is my wife, Kelsey. Hi. Hi there. Nice to meet you. How are you? Better circumstances. Your mom said you'd been in... Uh, said you had been in uh, My goodness, you're so bad. Boise. Yes, yeah, we stopped to see Sarah and uh, spend yeah, some time. Yeah, we're to go over there Thursday for her hearing on Friday. Yeah. Well, yeah, we, Boise was a beautiful city. We just came to talk for a bit. So while we were in town, figured we might as well stop. Yeah, we're kind of concerned with all that's going on with here. Well, I imagine so. So I figured I could fill in my details and if you guys have any questions, I could talk about it. And I'm also, you know, got some questions, so okay. I could just talk. Um, really? Your grandmother probably does not want to take part in the discussion. Well, I think grandma should because she's my grandma. And uh, I honestly, nice I'm I'll Kelsey. Keep it, I'll How keep are you? It fine, okay. I just, I, I won't go into anything, any details. I'll just. I would, I mean, cause if because I don't know the details, dear. Right, and I, I Grandma, I'll spare know. you. It doesn't matter for you. I'm just here for my part, and uh, my mom, I'm here about Sean, I'm here about everything. It's not, I come in peace, okay? I'm hoping okay. to go in peace, because this really is hard. That's what I'm here for, is to, 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 to talk Have and see. Have Thank seen. you. It's been a while since she visited. I think you came here with some friends last time. Yeah, I did. I came up with Julie and Matt and the dog. I, I just, Grandpa, I, where this all started with me personally was when Michelle called CPS on my family again. And I thought, there's no way. What's CPS? Child Protective Service for services. Okay. And I said, there's no way that I'm going to stand by and let that happen anymore. And then I got your letter where you said you were afraid of stepping in. And Sean literally beat the, beat the crap out of me to the point where I could have died. I'm so sorry. Pretty much my entire childhood. And everyone knew. Everyone knew that Sean was bad. Everyone knew what he was doing to me. CPS was called on him. They came to get me in the middle of the night with Elijah. Oh, my God. And I'm frustrated, and I feel like I'm owed some answers. Okay. I want to know why he's with my mom. I mean, he's to the point where if I see him, I'll probably kill him. Yeah. Because he threatens to kill her and my sisters. I've not heard that part. He, he told Wendell that. Oh, really? Oh. And so it's just like, it's just I don't understand. And then so I started, like going into this further and you know everyone talks to me everyone i know everything everything i know literally everything because people talk to me and because i care and because because at the end of the day i i i do what is right i do and i tell the truth and i yeah okay i've heard you've been telling people i'm insane i'm not I'm not insane. I've never been insane. I have two bachelors. I'm in my master's. I haven't said that. No, I've never insane. said that. Who well, said that? Well, uh, many, more than one person has said that you guys said you had to come home because I have, I'm emotionally unstable and I'm, I'm, uh. Well, you, we had to come home because you made a complaint through Bishop Brunt. Right. Of course I did, Grandpa. you reported to the hotline at the church. Right. Of course I did. And within two days of when you did that. We were released from our mission and told to go right. home. Right. We told you to pack up and get out of here. And understandably so. I mean, and really, really. And hurt. it's not my fault. You already told Mike everything, like, enough. It, it doesn't matter. You've called Debbie. Like, I'm friends with them all. We've been visiting them all. I know what you did to my mother, Sarah, and why she's in prison. And I, th what, what, I what did they do? Uh, what what I mean, what Sarah has uh, Sarah has told the entire family that just like Michelle that you had sex with her. Oh, Wait, heaven, alone. no. Never. Never, never, never. Then why would never, Michelle never. say that? Ne ne I don't know why Michelle said that. And what never. about Delsa? What about Darla? Well, De Delsa and uh, Debbie are the only ones that have had... Okay, when I was... Michelle as well. When I was 16 and 17, I had problems. Right. Okay? Okay. And, and, and they did that. not go past age 17. Uh, and, you know, I have uh, met with Delsa, 
begged for her forgiveness, heard her side of the story. I did this in early 2007. And I visited with Debbie also and asked for her forgiveness. I haven't been given any forgiveness, but still I have asked for it. Uh, and a as of right now, although Debbie shared a lot of stuff with you, Debbie does not want to prosecute me. She does not want to go back and, and dig up stuff that was 60 years ago. Right. And same with Delsa. Delsa wants nothing more to do with it. She said, uh, because we've been through that, I've, I've been through the repentance process. Do you want me to call them right now because someone's lying and it's either them or it's you? I just I had dinner Debbie, with. I talked to Debbie on Sunday. I just had lunch with. I just talked to Debbie this morning, and I just had lunch with Delsa yesterday. Okay. And so I'm fully aware of where they stand. I spent an hour and a half with Debbie, and Debbie told me that Delsa does not want to go. So then, why'd she talk to the prosecutor and give him two hour report if she didn't want to prosecute? Well, that doesn't make this, any sense. She did this early on, after you had made the complaint. Uh, because the computer, the process, the prosecutor called her, mm -hmm. and so she told him about that. But she also told the prosecutor, "I'm not interested in in prosecuting Dan and and uh, trying to bring up garbage that has been dealt with." So day. why did Michelle reach out to me then and tell me this stuff? Why would Michelle tell me that? Is she a liar uh, too? Michelle is a very compassionate person. Well, of course. If you called her and asked her about her experiences in being fondled, uh, then... Uh, well, I mean, regardless, do you think that's okay to fondle your own daughter? Hell no. Okay, so why'd you do it? It happened. What do you mean it happened? Uh, that was 1980. And your sister, like you full on had sex with your sisters. Like, that's not okay. Like, if that was my sister, I would, I would, I, it, Okay. I mean, you want to see crazy, you, Grandpa, you, like, have I sex with- No, that's the part I don't yeah. know. Okay. Okay, well, Grandma- I understand that I felt very bad about it. I confessed it to church authorities, uh, and- When? And, uh, while I was on my mission in China. You confessed it to them on your mission in China? Not. I did not confess it before going. I confessed it when I got there. Grandma, I, I'm just I frustrated because you've hurt a lot of people I, in my family. And you've hurt them, and I've, and most of all, what I'm frustrated about, I'm not even here about you. I'm here about Sean, about like why you guys never protected me. Honey, I, I fully understand your feelings. I do. Okay. Now, now, let me finish. There was no such thing as the Child Protection Services. I was abused in my teen years by my own father. Yeah, I know. And it was very difficult for me to have Dan Grandpa come and talk to me, but he was on his knees crying and begging for forgiveness. And did you forgive him? It, 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 it brought back feelings of what happened with my father. But I said, I'm just of the opinion that uh, I've made covenants with Grandpa, temple covenants. I do not break those covenants. And I, the Lord says, I will forgive whom I will forgive. But at man, it's, you, it's required you all that you would give all men. Well, the, then you might want to talk to Sarah because she tells people a lot different story about what happened. And I know like people just dismiss her as a liar. And um, I know my mom lies. I know. And I, I know she drinks. And I also know that children act out and people drink for a reason. Mm -hmm. Because I drink for a reason. Like, yeah, like, Grandpa's not wrong. For a long time I was drinking, I was upset. Because I had no family. Because, because Sean and Becky literally destroyed me. So because Becky is a mean, mean woman. I'm, I'm really? She told me she never loved me in high school until then. She told me I was too stupid for college. And then people want to sit around and wonder maybe why, mm -hmm. you know, I got a slow start to life. Maybe it's because they didn't send me to school. Sean was too busy literally beating me I for see. being gay. I, I didn't heard that. Well, I mean, the family knows he kidnapped me. That's common knowledge, is it not? No. I hadn't heard that. I hadn't heard that. So we're here, see, all these stories are floating around. And, and I'm here to address them. Yeah, well, was, you're internalizing a lot of anger. Of course I am. And Wouldn't I'm you be gonna, angry? Um, all of us have come out of 
damaged childhoods. We all have a damaged child. I have a damaged child too, but I I got to let go of it and get on with it. But my that, life. I mean, but that's not how it works. Like, there's the justice system for a reason. Uh, I'm sure you know that the most fatal PTS or fatal mental health disorder is PTSD. Correct. Right. Correct. So what is PTSD? It's reminders of trauma that you've been through. Sure. And so it should be really obvious to you why like Delsa and Deb and Michelle might feel that way. There's a reason Michelle's not talking to you right now. I mean, that's not for no reason. I know that. She no, went, she's had a nervous that. breakdown. I know that. Right, but I mean, that's you, you act like everyone has a traumatic childhood and they get over it. They don't. Michelle has been suicidal on and off her entire uh, yeah, but adulthood. Not, not just because of what happened between she and I. You don't think that, like, I mean, trauma is progressive. Trauma builds. It's complex. You, you get, you get, you know, you get. But she's had other traumas in her life. Like what? Uh, and, and, you know, when she, she had severe uh, postnatal depression after her first pregnancy and even worse after her second pregnancy. And she has to have depression at different times of the year. You know, a summertime you think so would be a good time to be happy. It's her, not for her. She her has life. depression in the summer. Well, what started me in this in the first place, Grandpa, was me just... Obviously, people talk to me and I listen and I care about my family members and I'm going to listen when I hear this stuff and I'm going to approach it and I'm going to do whatever I have to do to be an ethical person and make moral decisions and protect people. And so with me personally, like I know my case isn't like the main case like with you you gave me an exam when I was a kid and I, I asked Sean about it and Sean said it was for sexual abuse. And that's what I've claimed this entire time was that uh, you performed an exam and Sean said it was to make sure my hymen was intact to make sure Sarah didn't sexually abuse me. W w none of her people. So that's that's what I came here to talk to you about. Oh, I never heard that. I mean, and, and, yeah, and I could have done an exam. I cannot remember. But Michelle asked you guys and it was confirmed and she told me that it was uh, confirmed by you guys this year. She hasn't. No, never said. She ha uh, uh, the the term came to us that uh, you fondled Sarah and inserted your fingers in her vagina. And Sarah oh, or me? I'm sorry, Nikita. Nikita, and then inserted your fingers in her vagina for a medical exam. I do not remember the exam. Okay, and I, as far as doing it for reasons of sexual abuse, never occurred. But um, I, what I'm asking is just, I, I remember a medical exam taking place one night because Sarah had just crashed her car. Mm -hmm. oh. That's when it happened. She crashed her car a lot, and I remember doing this, and I remember what it was for, and I remember asking Sean over and over again what it was <laughs> for. And he told me why, what it was for, so apparently he had knowledge or else he was just making assumptions. But that's where I feel it's my right to ask questions sure. and it's my right to get the answers. Well, well I, I have no memory of the event. Okay. Okay. When did you and, have this car crash, I don't remember. This event took, took place when I was five and Sarah, car Sarah crashed her car a few times, it sounds like. I know yeah. that that was when uh, you were little. Um, Sarah, you were born in Greenfield. And uh, the lady that your parents were living with and here, your father was, was doing, uh, on the ranch, was borrowed Becky's, you know, uh, saddle to work up there. That the lady called me, she says, I'm really worried about this little girl, yeah. my granddaughter. Sarah is neglecting her. Right. And he, so she said, I called, you know, I guess for, uh, the welfare and asked that they take her, you. And then they went over to, they took her down here to Boise with Tom and Valerie. And they already had a little boy. And says, we can't do this. And the, the lady, I don't know who this lady was, she says, I'm really worried for your granddaughter. And then they, Tom and Valerie brought you over to me. Yeah. And I had just had this accident with my leg. With yeah. My, with, I guess it was my, no, my 90, knee. 93. My, yeah, my, with my knee. Oh, okay, that was after that. And so anyway, I, I, and I, I went ahead and started feeding you, and your sweet little face looked at me, and I picked you up to hug you, and you were trying to kind of trying to feel. I felt like you were trying to kiss me on my face. Yeah. You were just. Oh, was that when she was just a little baby? She was a baby. Yeah. I mean. Because I know she lived with us for. Well, about, she. About four months. Uh, 
when Becky lived with us. Yeah, Becky came down in 93 in March when I had, after that, because I had that bad accident in the Quebec country and yeah, lost on par. And, mm -hmm. I, and then 95, I think he started kindergarten, and I remember walking into the bus a couple of times. And then we took you with. And then in October that year, we took the you to. Um, was well, after and Elijah Hector, was born. Yeah, we took to you to Hector and pulled a trailer back there, and then your dad came with the pickup or with the uh, whatever he had. <laughs> I think it was a pickup, but but anyway, he came. Uh, that was in 90, 95, October of ninety five, when you guys moved to Galesburg. Yeah. Um, and like why you had no idea that Sean was abusing Becky or that she was in any kind of abusive relationship? We, we had some information when they were living in Moscow, Moscow I don't know. Uh, that Sean had been off the deep end and, and was abusing Becky and we tried to find out about it. No, uh, we, we, we got, when we were up there for the motorcycle rally up in Sun Valley, and that's that noise, Sunset, where Rob, Robert Redford was, anyway, with a motorcycle group. We got a call from the Relief Society president. They were, it was in your mother and dad's ward. Was yeah. that when they were in Moscow? Or was yes, that? and she said that they're living at this house with me, but I really worry about your daughter. But Sean had taken off with one of the girls and was gone somewhere else. That's when he went with me. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah, he took off with me and Elijah because Uncle Wendell was gonna ha said he was gonna have CPS come and or they were gonna come get us in the night, but Becky tipped Sean off, yeah, so well, he took Sean, off. Sean tends to really tick off Wendell. They've never <laughs> been able to. Well, Sean ticks off everyone because he's insane. He's absolutely insane. That man is a danger. Well, I I always um, I didn't know all what was going on. I mean, the one time that you were still in. At the time, Amalia was born. What, what state was it? What city was it? Illinois. Okay. Yeah, great. Or, yeah, Illinois. Illinois. So I remember when she was born, and I, and I was there. I came and uh, saw her. I was, and we came back there two or three times. So are you aware that Elder Mickelson is also, or that Elder Mickelson is a child molester? Were you aware of that? No. Nope. You had no idea. Yeah, he's a child molester, and um, he his case is about to come to light as well. Our former state president. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your former yeah state president. Lynn Nicholson. Yeah, he's a he's a child molester. He accused his own granddaughters of being sexually inappropriate with him when they were just six years old. So he well, accused well, I, them first. I, you know, I don't. I don't want to hear about that. And then I, oh, why not? He's in your church. He's not, active. Why don't, don't you guys care? We don't. We don't want to hear, hear things that are okay. not appropriate for us to hear, and it's not uh, going to be helpful to you. Oh, then how about let's talk about this. Ira Corey. Do you know who he is? No. The judge, the I justice of yeah. yeah, right. He was the one that actually orchestrated my grandmother's child marriage. So I have a lawsuit against the entire Mormon Church right now because. My grandmother on the other side, yeah. your, your dad's mother, yeah, was uh, sold as a child bride by the Mormons. Oh. Ira Corey, who used to stand out in his yard and show his penis to children, that man. And he was also a neighbor, so I found that really weird. Yeah, that, uh, that, you know, that Ira Corey was a, uh, a good man. He was a good man who happened to sell my mother as a child, or my grandmother as a child bride. The same grandmother that you told at the mall would never see me again. Surely? Yeah, surely. And you also cut my mother's milk in half because you didn't want a fat Native American child. Uh, heavens no, I never did. W that. Would you like me to call up about five people who can tell me that I that's don't true? Really have all why, this information. why are you digging all this crap? Why? Because that's why my mom's in prison. Becky hated me, just like you didn't why like Sarah. Why is mom in prison? My mom's in prison because you had sex with her again Bologna. and again. It's Bologna. true. Bologna. No, Bologna. it did not happen. Because your mother has told us the same thing. It never happened. She I'm, told you the same thing? That nothing like that ever happened. So why did she tell everybody else something different? I don't know. I just don't know. And do you see where the credibility is gone because you used to rape your sisters when they were eight years old? 
Do you see why maybe I'm inclined to believe my mother? And do you know what happens to child rapists never, in prison? It never happened to your mother. But it happened to your sisters. That was six years That's all been taken care of. And then Michelle, of. and that was taken care of it's again? Been, it, it was five years also ago. taken care of. The, no, that, that's we, not taken two, care of. There were two episodes. I touched her inappropriately. I went to the... What bishop. about Delsa? I, I also confessed about Delsa. And, and she has, they, he's been through two they, apostles. They all, and already which apostles? Elder Anderson, and, and before President Hinckley became a president of the church, Elder Hinckley, when he was Lord a Christian. And what did you tell him happened, though? Like, how I just don't understand how the Mormon church, like, you guys are all okay with my mom being in prison for drinking and driving. No. Why do you think you shouldn't go to prison? What makes you immune to the justice system? Uh, statute of limitations. There is no more statute of limitations than there I... There certainly is. Well, okay. There is. There is. You're right. There is. But there's also the Supreme Court. I was a minor. No, it didn't. It happened again. You were 19. It happened to Michelle. Funneling your daughter's breast is also not really normal. I Trying to stick your penis inside of her is not normal. I'm not tried to stick my Yes, you did. You told this to Deb I last night. You told not. this to Deb. Yes. I did not. Can I call Deb then and let her know? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I told Deb that I had found her twice. Okay. She crawled into bed. Then let's call Deb. We'll Mother call her right now. was asleep in bed next to me, and Michelle called in and cut, crawled in and cuddled up to me. Well, I did not have we're gonna, then we're gonna. Then we're gonna. Her. No, you tried. I and did not. You told this to Debbie. I did not. De Hi, Debbie. Grandpa says he did not try to stick his penis in Michelle. Is that true? He said he put it down there. Yep. And I then, put it between her legs. I did not yeah, put it in her. Well, that's that's normal, Grandpa. To put your penis between your daughter's legs is also normal. Listen, yeah, this so has been confessed. Okay. It has been handled. Michelle wants nothing else to do with it. Going, okay. okay. It hasn't been dealt with because you're not in Let prison. your anger go. Your grandfather and grandmother love you very much. This is what love is. Love is hearing your granddaughter express all of this hurt that she has gone through. Okay, that, but that's not her hurt. This that's is her hurt. You don't think hurt. I have this compassion? This is her hurt. Oh, well, we it's know okay to have compassion. We have compassion you're, for you. You're accusing me of stuff that never happened, number one. I'm not. I'm just, I have accused you of nothing except performing an exam on me. No, you're accusing me of never handling the repentance process. When you handled the repentance happen. process. You didn't handle the judicial process. There's a difference. There was There's not a, a separation judicial of, process. There is a judicial process There's for child There's not rape. a judicial process for stuff that's 60 years ago. Well, what about Michelle? That was 30 years ago. That was 35 and years And then, then you gave me this exam, which it did happen. So you did this to those. I mean, you, did, you had no right to give me that exam. And I want to know who consented for that exam. Was Probably it your mother? Sean. It could have been. Did Sean consent to it? I don't know. That's what I'm here to find out. You I gave it. I, uh, Who is my child? Who is those, my parents? Those medical records are all gone. Why? I would have made a medical record on that. Yes. Because after seven years of closing your office, you yeah. destroyed Did you suspect work. that I was sexually abused by Sarah? It, right, by her crew, by whatever if happened? If your father came to me and said, has this gal been sexually abused by one of Sarah's partners? Who said that? If your father came to me and said, I want you to examine my daughter because I want to be sure she's not been sexually abused by one of Sarah's partners. And I may have done an examination on you. I do not have any recollection of that. That's a long time. Well, I remember watching child pornography with my mom's crew. Like those yeah. people, whoever watched her, I remember having sex okay. with men when I was a but child. But I told your father there's no evidence of any bruising. There's no evidence of any penile penetration of the vagina. And how, and do, you, and how do you check for that, though? You look. How do you know that a child has not been penetrated? I don't know. This is something you need to explain to me. This is what I'm here to ask. You look inside their vagina, and then it says, how do you know? Like You look at their perineum. Okay, so their hymen. I don't think I looked in your vagina. I may have spread your labia and looked at, at the hymen. But you do not do finger penetration no. of the vagina. So you just you spread look. my labia and you looked at the hymen. You look. Okay. So that's right. what happened okay. in the exam. Okay. Well, okay. So number... If your father came insisting on that be done, I would do that uh, and inform uh -huh. him there's no evidence of any penetration or, okay. or bruising. I just want to know... Most people get bruised. When they... 
Okay, and then as far as my father, who that William, who's dead, there's uh, you were the prescribing doctor for his medication. That, were you aware that no, he was going? No, I was not. You weren't. Then how come your name were on the pills that he took? I was never. I never provided. Any never medication. For okay. Him. Well, that's as all far I, as I know. Asking. He never came to see me as a patient. The only time he came once with Sarah when he came back when they went all the way across the United States and came back and she was. And he and uh, she, they they asked to have a pregnancy test, and it showed that she was pregnant. Sarah, my mom. Mm -hmm. Right. And he. So anyway, I mean, I guess she was about seventeen then, sixteen, seventeen years old. And uh, anyway, you know, I really. This is a sorrowful thing. Yeah. That you've had to you've had to go through. Right. Well, and here's the here's the thing, Grandpa. Even if my criminal charges don't go through, which they will, because I'll just uh, appeal it in the Supreme Court, because the statute of limitation only allows abusers to abuse, because that's garbage. It doesn't matter when you got raped. It shouldn't matter. So. Uh, uh, in Idaho, it goes to age 19. Well, they just appealed. They got rid of that in 2006. No, they have not. They no. did. They may have done it. They may have done it in Michigan. No. They Look it up. In Idaho. Have you looked up? Have you Googled the statute I've of limitations? To my attorney, attorney, and he says the statute of limitations in Idaho is age nineteen. You talked to your attorney recently? Yes. Yes. Last week on Wednesday. Okay. Well, I I don't know. Uh, you should try just Googling this because it will tell you that in two thousand six the governor reversed okay. that. It doesn't matter regardless. Uh, let, let me say this. Okay. The stuff that you're doing is damaging. Of course it is, and the stuff you did is damaging. I admit that. And I admit that what I'm I doing have, is damaging. I have confessed that with the proper authorities, church authorities, and I have been told to get on with my life. By them. By them. How recently did they, did they, did you tell them what happened 1960. recently? Sixty. But what about now? Have you talked to them recently? Yes. And what uh, they say? Well, the, the most recent thing that happened is we were kicked off our mission. And they didn't tell you why? They did not tell us why. So said they I had to why. guess. I said the only person I can understand that is nuts enough to do this. <laughs> is me. And I'm the crazy I didn't one. I not say you were crazy. I just said you were angry. No, you, you told people I found this under hypnosis. I don't know where you got I that from. I said, I don't know how she came up with this. Perhaps she had hypnosis. Why hypnosis? Because hypnosis is, it goes into what are called uh, repressed memories. Yes, I know what repressed memories okay. are. And so, like, well, studied if they're repressed, that means they haven't. Right. So, unless they're well, unless unless I'm confabulating this, which I'm not. Had someone look at your at your vagina, uh, and and then you accuse me of sexual abuse as a result. No, no, no. I accused you of an exam when I was a five-year-old. Okay. That's what I and accused it, you it of, because that happened. exam happened. As I say, I cannot remember. I remember, Grim, because I used to really care about you, and I used to love you, and you once told me that I would do something, I was brought to this earth to do something important, and that's I'm what sure it is. That. Right. And, yeah, and I have a letter. But it's not to, to put me, me in prison. 2016, yeah. September 10th, saying that you loved us. I do love you. Absolutely. Why are you so angry with this? You want to hurt us. I, Grandma, this isn't hurting you. The, this, the only way that, the only way that this can be right is for justice to occur. Yeah, I would say the same. I prayed my mom would go to prison this li last time. I prayed uh -huh. because she could not hurt herself or anybody else. Now, I know a man that has raped two generations of women does not just change like it's like alcoholism like i'm battling that every day still i don't drink and i'm sure you must battle inappropriate thoughts yourself because they don't just go away i mean you were attracted to children that doesn't just stop like did you just pray for forgiveness and it went away like i'm curious i need to know this because that's not how psychology works. How, how does the repentance process work? How, no, how does you being healed from being someone who abuses children happen? Like, how did you just get better? How do you stand in front of the Lord? What did you do that made this okay? You spend a lot of time on your knees to start with and communicating with the Lord. You go to church authorities and you confess and take their advice. So you trusted them? Uh, for example, in 2006, when we put in first to go on a mission. Yeah. Um, 
the uh, papers were sent to Salt Lake, and at that time, Mike called and said, there's something wrong in our family. There's some stuff that's buried, and it's not been well handled, and it needs to be dealt with so that we can communicate. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I talked to a representative in Rexburg, uh, and then he referred me to the representative for Idaho, who at that time was Neil Anderson in Salt Lake City, who was an apostle. <coughs> and initially he was a 70, and then he was an apostle. And uh, uh, made an appointment to go and see him, and I says, this is what has happened in my past. I had written a letter to President Hinckley, and President Hinckley referred it to Brother Anderson to handle. And I admitted again everything that had come out years before. What did you admit to? Like, what did they know? Were you honest in that letter? With I admitted to having intercourse with two of my sisters, and um, then uh, in that same letter, I admitted to fondling my daughter. Uh, and inappropriately. And I said, the first time I visited with President Hinckley and told him that I was uh, very sorry for what I'd done and I uh, would go home and make things right as much as I could. Uh, and I was in Taipei, Taiwan at the time, 8,000 miles around the world. And Elder Hinckley said, write to your state president and see what he advises and write to your father and tell him everything that's happened. Right. And so I did. And we received replies from the state president and, fa and my father to President Hinckley. And President Hinckley, when he returned on his next visit, says, I want you to stay here and complete an honorable mission. And um, so I did. I served there for two and a half years. So you feel like you repented and this is over with and I'm bringing up and ruining your life over old stuff? Uh, it was repented and I was told that I could uh, continue working in the church at that time. And um, uh, then Mike brought it up again in 2006 as if it had not been handled. Now my father knew about this, my mother knew about it, my stake president knew about it. And you know, my only question for dad when I meet him is, why didn't you take your daughters who had been abused and help walk them through the process? Yeah, that, was, I, that came to my mind Great too. grandpa never, great said, grandpa never dealt with it. Why didn't you help Becky through the process yeah, what of being that, abused? What, what, what about what, her? What is that process? Because you said like? you can't step in. So what about that process? Well, I tried to step in. And Are you afraid of Sean? Uh, yes. Sean threatened me. With Sean, what? Sean threatened me too, and I thought he was. How did he threaten you? Uh, I thought it was Well, I, I told him, I said, Sean, I think you have bipolar disorder. I remember some that. Of the, some of the things that uh, you have done. And this is while you were living in Moscow. He came over to our motel at 2 o'clock in the morning and pounded on the door, and he says, I want you to know I'm not bipolar. And I'm not gonna, I, I don't want you to be my doctor. And I said, I have never offered to be your doctor. <laughs> and I wouldn't anyway. And you know, that was, uh, I don't know what year that was. I don't, I don't know, but he came another time to our house too, when yeah, we were living that, on the river. It, it and, was maybe in 2000. And, and said the same thing. But you know, you just said, I really cannot be, be your physician. I'm too close to the situation yeah. mm -hmm. because I, I, we're re related, and I just think, yeah, but I think you, and if you, you way, have a problem, you need to find your own somebody, keep, your own physician. keeps digging at you, niggling at you until uh, you don't want to be a part of it anymore. And then when we heard the, from the uh, bishop or whoever it was in, in <laughs> Moscow that Becky was in danger, I said, should I come over and get her? Should I come over and pick her up with the children? And uh, they went through uh, child welfare authorities at that time and had a family evaluation done and actually had some counseling. And that all happened while they were still in Moscow. Do you trust the prophet? Do you like him? Absolutely. Absolutely. These are men that, uh, that are without... Um, without guile. They never, they've never abused children. How do you know that? You just know. 
I, I, you can't I'll, trust I'll men. Me, humans are humans like or the, lie. Are they perfect? Yeah, no. 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 So Even how Joseph can you just Smith wasn't perfect? So how do you trust that? How do you just trust that because you know somebody that they're not an abuser? Because I talked to the Lord. And the Lord tells you that they're fine. Well, the Lord, you, you you witnessing of the Spirit. As you know, you've been baptized and had the yeah. gift of the Holy Ghost. It will witness to you of things that are true. Well, why do you think I'm here? The Holy Spirit did this. I I'm would, following my patriarchal, patriarchal blessing by being here and bringing the truth to light. Because a lot of people really didn't know in the family. I know, and it's really well. You sure, you sure made sure that everybody knows. About of course, that. I do. I did. It'd just be like uh, Jeffrey Deb, Dahmer on the Deb loose. and her family were uh, due to come up here a couple of weeks ago and spend three days and do a float on the river. And Deb couldn't come because her health is not bad. But her two daughters said, "Well, we're not going to go up there where there's a child molester." And we've got, we've got and, another uh, family. Do you think that that's unjustified? I mean, you did. I'm rape not a children. child molester. Well, you molested Michelle. Well, that was long ago. So you're healed. I'm healed. How? That's what I asked you I, in the first place. I How are you healed? The repentance process. But that repent, God does multiple times. God doesn't just take away. The, I mean, he doesn't just stop. Like you, you probably should. <sighs> that's my brother. Which one here? My uh, my actual brother, Alex. No, Taylor. Yo, sorry. I know. Oh, uh, they didn't sit there. The yeah. restroom's down the hall, the second door to the right here. I'm not here. I'm well, the, you know, I, are we going to come to a That's what I came here for, is just like, I, I wanted you to be honest with me about that exam, because I know what happened, I remember it taking place, and I just wanted to know from your perspective, you had a history of doing that with children. For me, I just, I'm going to question it, Grandpa. I'm going to say, I'm going to ask you what that exam like it was a pure medical exam that's what i want to know yeah. sure yeah and if, if, if sean asked to be done because you were in and out even with their family then yeah you came back to live with sarah for a while and then in idaho falls because he so and you were starting to go to kin uh, to a grade school there yeah. for a while like around close to your seven eight years old that i remember but there were many times that i'd come to pick you were at a daycare center and your mother was working. I come back and find you, and you're telling me, Grandma, I'm hungry. There's mm -hmm. nothing in the fridge. Mm -hmm. And she had been entertaining somebody in her apartment. And there you were, just wandering around starving. Poor little thing. And um, so it was... Yeah. Why didn't you guys adopt me? We, we were cautioned it's too hard. They had many people who were doing, asking the same question. They said, it's very hard to be a grandparent and the discipliner at the same time. Right. And they said, we would advise you not to do so. What about? And, and probably because we were too selfish to adopt you. I know people who have adopted children, multiple people who have raised their grandkids. And uh, we were at that time of our life where uh, when this was happening to you, where, uh, you know, uh, that was when she was born, 1990. And we still had Michelle around. Yeah, she, Michelle was the only one around. And at school, and she was going to school. You know, we could have done it. When but did Shelly marry? 1996. Yeah. So she was still there, and we were still trying to finish raising our family. And, and uh, uh, so we had asked. Uh, other family members, Tom and Val, uh, Cindy and David, Cindy and Dave, if they would consider. And we even took you to their places and they said, we already have a child of our own. We don't think we could take on a second child at this time. So if you have nothing to hide, why won't you talk to Detective Albright? We have. Uh, to I our attorney. To to your I attorney. Talked to Dick, Dick, Detective Albright. Uh, and, you know, I visited at length with my attorney and my attorney told me, if Detective Albright calls, please refer him to me. Right. And I'll be glad to uh, tell him everything that we know. And, and what is that that you know? Just everything you've told me? Everything I've told. I, I've told my attorney everything. Everything. Yes. But the, we want to... That you've want... been angry and you're trying to prosecute me for stuff that happened 60 and 35 years ago. And... Uh, he proceeded to tell me about a couple of lawsuits that he'd had, one of which was... Uh, 
I'm sorry, I've not met him. That's my brother. That's Taylor. Hi there. He's a uh, Taylor. He's a uh, William's other kid. Yeah, I'm fine. I don't shake hands. <laughs> Sorry. He's not a toucher. Yeah. Okay, I won't. Sorry. I'll hold <laughs> But anyway, my, that was my attorney's instructions, was that he visit with all right. Well, well, that's wonderful on that side, but I also have a civil lawsuit against uh, the church mm -hmm. as well. So, I mean, the the public is going to, like, going to know. The public, the media knows. Everyone knows. And I'm going to keep talking about it because... I think it's really messed up how this family deals with abuse in general. Mm -hmm. I do. Well, you're saying I'm messed up. Who? You? No, no, no. I'm saying everybody in this family who knows about this stuff, who knows that, that Sean is evil and th who knows what you did to anybody. I think everyone who has not said something and come forward. I know that Sean is evil. I know that Sean has been very strict. See, you don't know that he's an abuser. I don't know that he's I don't know. Leader. You I guys know just I, said you knew I, that. I know he's licked you. He's I, licked I, I me? Know, I know he's beaten you. L beaten me. Yeah, you because you're telling us this. Yeah. That's what you've told me. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and I you don't told me that before. This is not the first time. Um, you know, think of the times we come over and visit you when you were over in Grand Rapids, Michigan. The fun times we get together and we go to the motel and you come over and we go swimming. Yeah, I used to love you guys. And we, and we, we go in and watch the TV or program and we'd sit there and eat red like Christian. Can you think of the good times? Yeah. Well, I remember doing, I remember those experiences. So, uh, but I saw my experiences that you guys denied me about my experiences that my granddaughter. I'm sorry. You guys kind of cut me out of her life of being my good experiences from my granddaughter. How does she fit in? That's my grandma I, Shirley. I'm Shirley. I'm oh, it's Shirley. Mom. Oh, Shirley. Yeah. That's you where I feel it. hurt. Because I didn't get to see her until she was an adult. I oh. saw her once when she was eight years old. Yeah. And, and, she, and I finally got to see her when she's an adult. I have 40 something grandkids. I have 40 something grandkids. You guys called her retarded. I have 11, I have 11. You guys have called my grandma Shirley retarded because she cannot read and write when I asked why oh, she baloney. was. Yes, I'm you not, did. No, oh, baloney. I only think I met you maybe a couple of times. I missed year. you once. I missed, I met you once when you was walking in the mall. I met him three times. I think we yeah, came to your I was in once. your house you a did. couple of times. She well, was at my house a couple of times. Yeah. And you brought her to see me. At, I, I really think mom. I just got to end this. There's no, there's no, okay. there's, this is ridiculous. Wait a friend. minute. What? Uh, and I'm going to throw a scare every one of you. We accept you for who you are. What does that even mean? You don't. You that already told me that. You're I practicing be... in a gay lifestyle. If you that's want to do that, that's what? your what business. What does that have to do with anything? You're practicing that's... in a pedophilia lifestyle. Like we're yeah. accepting things. Baloney. We have a lot more to accept on your behalf than anybody else. Baloney. That's not but something. I think we just. I just think we got to. That's not something that. Okay. okay. I just want to say you guys are not my grandparents. Yeah, okay. We're in no blood. We're no way are we related. M Becky was never a mother to me. You were guys were never like good grandparents to me because you should have protected me. And we didn't know that was going right, on. right. And um, just so you know that this is it. Like I don't want any more emails. I I don't care. I think you're disgusting. I think like, listening to Deb talk about how she used to wash her vagina after wash the 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 Vaseline off her vagina after you that raped her. Sixty years ago. Uh, it doesn't the matter. Point. It's like it doesn't be matter. A statute of limitations on that. Sarah. Yeah. I'm not Sarah. You don't even know my no. I'm sorry, Nikita. No. Nikita, no, you're not stop it. You're wrong. Nikita. Go, wait, 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 wait. Thanks. No, dude. Stop this. Fuck you, Fucking weirdo.